Here we go. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Community Board 3, Manhattan Community Board 3's Executive Committee meeting for the month of October 2021. Today, we're going to start off with our roll call, and I would like to apologize on behalf of myself for not sending out the executive minutes in advance for you to vote on those. So we will vote on those at next month's executive committee meeting. Thank you. Eric, can you do a roll call? Yes. Here it is. Um, one second. Oh, sorry. Okay, here we go. Uh, Alicia Lewis Coleman. Yes. Larissa Scheinberg. Aki. Oh, great. Uh, Larissa. Okay, uh, Eric Diaz, yes. Uh, here. Tomas Rosa. That should be taken off. I didn't know he had resigned. Okay, I'm, I'm not gonna count. Okay, we're gonna remove it. Okay, uh, Shirley Fennessy. She, she also, also resigned, no. I just found out. Linda, we have to promote somebody. Oh no, not don't promote her, Sandra. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I saw Sandra. Yeah. So, uh, David Crane. Here. David, yes, okay, I hear you, David. Nisha Steve. Here. Okay, May Lee. Yes. Uh, Jackie Wong. Here. Uh, Linda Jones. Here. Okay. Michelle Cooper Smith. Absent. Absent. And then Trevor Holland. Here. Okay, Trevor. And then lastly, we have Paul Rangel. Uh, here. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Eric. Um, so First, uh, I'd like to just say, yeah, it was, I was taken aback uh, by Shirley's resignation. Um, I know she has some personal things she's dealing with and her family. And I got the email, um, I was caught off guard, but, um, and then Thomas had a commitment with school and work. So he also had to step down. I believe May Lee, I invited him to have a conversation with you. Did he have a conversation with you? Uh, yes, he did. Um, maybe it was last week or it was before the Human Services Committee meeting. So yeah, okay. he mentioned he talked to you and was thinking about his options at the time. Yes. And so um, as always, I will always encourage everyone to do what's best for them personally. I know that there are tons of things happening for everyone right now as we are in this COVID crazy frenzy of nonsense. And I don't even understand what's going on with people losing jobs and all of those things. But anyway, at the end of the day, um, I, you know, I do appreciate everyone's commitment to your positions. It's a lot of work. Um, and I think like uh, we were talking before the camera came on, but the commitment, people really don't know the levels of the commitment. And I think that all the current officers need to be honest with the incoming officers or people that have potential to run for these positions. I think we all need to just be very frank and honest with them about the level of commitment and the level of work and the policies and procedures because um, often we're having to um, have people respond to emails if they don't, um, having people to attend meetings and when they do, they don't understand what they're supposed to say or do. When they go to meetings that they're not representing their personal selves and representing everyone um, on the board. And so we don't speak on ourselves unless we say I'm speaking for myself. So there's just th certain things I want everyone to just be committed to talking to um, all the candidates when they call you and they approach you about your position and can you tell me something about your position or how, you know, whatever, tell me a little bit about it. I want you to be honest. I mean, I'm not to scare anyone off, but I just need you to be honest with people so that they truly understand um, the level that goes into the work that we, you all do and I do. Um, 
I want to thank Linda for attending this morning's borough board meeting. Um, I, she came back with some uh, two great informational pieces. Um, the first one was about the Manhattan Borough President's Office is sending out the invitations for the um, the new series of leadership training that they're doing. Um, and uh, we're encouraging, especially the new members, they have this new members, um, I don't know, I want to call it boot camp, but it's a new members uh, um, uh, meeting that they want everyone to attend. So that means not just the ones that came on board this uh, term, but the one before that, the COVID uh, 2020 term, and then the 2021 term as well. It, it um, actually sounded quite, uh, I mean, it might, it's probably going to be intense, but yeah. not a bad review for all of us. That's good. I think, yeah, I would encourage everyone to try and join that, um, especially if you're going to stick around. It's, it's, it's informative. All information is good, right? I mean, you discern yeah. what what you need and what you don't. It sounded need, right? like somebody really thought it through. I was impressed. Good, good to hear. There was something else you sent me too, Linda, that took place at Borough Board this morning. What was that other one? Yeah, let me pull up my notes. Uh, I wasn't quite ready to talk about it yet. Um, Well, why don't you save it for your report? I'll let okay. you know that. Yeah, it was it was about uh, equity in the court system, but it's quite a quite a large large topic and worthy of our consideration. Okay, so I'll let you share a little more about that. Um, I also want to thank uh, Jamie Filber for stepping up to become the nominating chair committee um, chair of the nominating committee. Um, it is it's going to be like a rapid rapid thing because it is now the third week in October. And so here we are having to have at least one or two meetings during this month. And so I wanna thank Linda, Jamie, Tariq, Andrea, um, I think, and and uh, who else was on there? Oh, and Josephine Velez, thank you. Thank you so very much for stepping up to the plate and taking on this very, um, important role on our community board. Um, the picking of officers is never easy um, and making sure that we do this with integrity and honesty. Thank you so much. Um, and I think that's it because we have a lot to do tonight with the budget priorities and I don't wanna waste not a second and I don't wanna keep anyone here over a long period of time. So thank you so much. A question, Alicia, just who's gonna take the minutes for the election? and for the whole full board next month? Okay, so I have to find um, someone or I ask one of you uh, chairs. Do you, me, do you want me to do it? If you can, Eric, that will really be helpful. All right, I'll do it. Thank you very much. Since you're very familiar with the process, I appreciate that. Um, okay, so that's it for me. First vice chair's report. I don't believe, uh, Larissa, you have anything to report, right? Larissa's having trouble okay. with her she audio. Said no, she said no, she has nothing. Um, Eric, second vice chair's report. She says no in the chat. Yeah, that's what, yeah. Would, would you want me to report on the attendance or leave that for? Um, the attendance is on the agenda. Let me see. I don't think it's- It's not a separate, separate item. item. It's it a separate is, item. Yes, yeah, a that's separate fine. item, yeah. That okay. was it, except that I yeah, okay. put together. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to you and then let's go to Susan and then get to the budget and then we'll go over the attendance, okay? Because the no, attendance sorry. is a very, very important piece for the election process as well, okay? All right, no, so let's go on to the district manager's report, Susan. Um, sure. Um, I've mentioned for a year, couple of years now that we're um, going to be uh, moving to a new website, the uh, number of board members um, actually uh, weighed in on a survey on what they wanted to see um, and uh, do what information technology it was at one of our board meetings a few years ago. Um, I'm not at all happy with it. Um, these new websites are big and fl you know flashy and look nice and are very bad for um, having a lot of information like we have on our website. So I think people are gonna have a much harder time um, finding information, um, particularly like the SLA stuff that people use 
um, you know, both the public and, um, you know, one of the committee uses constantly, but it is what it is. Um, so we have to do it. Um, Ed, I'm going to say, has stepped up tremendously to be working with Do It on this. It's taken a lot of time and um, just been difficult. Um, so I'm going to be away until November 9th, from uh, November 1st through November 9th. So I asked him not to um, move to the new one until I came back. So uh, that'll probably happen at the end of November. And um, it's going to take us a while to kind of get it all together. Um, at the last full board meeting, there was some really serious misinformation given as well as comments about me as controlling money. And I'm going to uh, mention this at the full board, but I want to correct the information. Um, the district manager position is absolutely nothing like an executive director. And the main reason for that executive directors are generally nonprofits. Um, and I, I can understand why people don't understand the big difference with um, um, a city agency because they're not involved in that and so they're not seeing it every day. But for instance, in a city agency, it takes three people to pay a bill, three people online to pay a bill. No one person can do anything. We can only use city vendors. We um, only make use contracts with um, that the city has, um, negotiated contracts with. Um, the board hires and fires. An executive director would have that position, but a district manager doesn't have that position. That is only the board. Um, every penny we spend is visible on the controller's website. And I will give that link at the full board. So it is impossible for anything to, um, to not be transparent. Um, I distributed the budget to everybody um, earlier, um, I, earlier today. Um, I will continue to do that at executive committee meetings because um, in order to protect myself, I want it done at a public meeting where, where there are minutes and I want the minutes to reflect that the budget was distributed. Um, so, I, I hope that's a little bit um, a little bit clarifying. Um, Ms. Susan, can I just ask one related sure. to this? Is is any way your your position related to outreach at all? That was a question that was brought up to me. I wasn't sure whether or not just about general outreach for committee meetings. I don't know if that's part of. This has been brought up again and again, and it was brought up to me. Someone is saying that I'm supposed to be doing the outreach for NYCHA subcommittee. I've never done the outreach for NYCHA subcommittee under the various chairs. I don't know where that came from. And, you know, it's, I'm going to tell you, it's been, it's been a very busy two weeks. I've gone to meetings every night because of the budget priorities. I've spent a tremendous amount of time researching all this stuff. You know, I send, I get up, I'm sending emails and reading emails at seven in the morning and at 10 at night. And I would like to know when people expect me to be doing this outreach. I mean, really think about it. Yeah. Think about it. It's upsetting. It's, it's very upsetting. Um, Susan, I'm so sorry that you're experiencing that. And I know that that is upsetting to you. And I know um, for about three years or four, maybe, um, I've heard that same conversation and we've already corrected that several times, but there are new members on the board and they don't all know what the facts are. And so that's why it's so very important for people to attend any meeting that they feel questioned about. They should definitely attend those committee meetings so that they can get all the myths dispelled. Um, it's not fair to Susan to have to, have to you know, correct herself or anything that is not true. Um, we know that that is not a fact. Um, the, the committee chair of the NYCHA subcommittee is the one that is encouraged, not necessarily told to do, but encouraged to reach out to the NYCHA development uh, residential leaders. So um, I don't want anyone to put that burden on Susan or anyone in the office uh, shoulders. That's not, their, that's not their position. 
That's so our position. My, my job description is under member resources. The board voted on my job description. And it's not that no district managers ever do outreach. And there are times when I have, um, but you've got to consider there's only 26 hours in a day. So when, what else would you like not to be done? Um, this did come up at this subcommittee. I did explain this at the subcommittee. Um, board members are chosen to represent different populations, different ge geographies, different developments. And the reason for that is so that they can be reaching out to their, commu their communities. Um, yeah, no, that's fine. So it's clear, I, I, it wasn't really related to anything related to the NYCHA subcommittee, just it was brought up separately, but you answered the question, there's no. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's a tremendous amount more SLA work. Um, I don't know if any of you have looked recently at the um, SLA, well, you, I sent the SL draft agenda out. If you look at the SLA agenda, you will see the number of items under not heard at committee has probably quadrupled. Um, some of this is this municip municipal expansion. So any um, bar that opens now or hasn't previously had outdoor dining must now come to the community board. Um, if you remember, we voted a couple of months ago, thank God, just in time to handle this administratively. So at least it's not put on the committee and you don't have 10 hour committee meetings, but it is, um, it is, taken on all of this because it, if we split up the work for one committee, it it's, um, gets very confusing. Um, so it's just creating a tremendous amount more work. I encourage everybody um, to look at that agenda just to be aware of that. Um, um, there's another money issue I just wanted to tell everyone. I actually find it convenient to have a treasurer. Um, because twice in, I'd say the last six months, money issues have come up where I had to have an immediate answer and I was able to call David and Alicia to get a go ahead. Um, so this happened since the last meeting. There is a, um, a new group in New York City called Future of Community Board Working Group. It's um, formed by district managers and they're um, trying to prepare a report, we're well on the way to preparing a report to try and engage the new administration with a lot of the issues that community boards have. Um, one is resources, um, one is um, a consistency in skills and trainings throughout this city, um, uh, working relationships very much in the last eight years, working relationships have suffered very much between community boards and the administration, and we would like to, um, to rectify that. They're also looking for help with community board um, budgets and operations, human resources, um, training, that kind of thing. So um, the board has worked on a report. They've now hired somebody um, to write up the report, um, and it's, we've hired Lacey, um, Tauber, who some of you may know from um, when Pratt worked on the, um, the last rezoning. Um, and she, so anyway, the, um, we have to, we're paying her $5,000 and um, we are having boards chip in um, to pay that. So I called David and Alicia and they both thought it was a great idea. I'm gonna take that from the Red Cross Fund, which has $17,000 and it's still and should have been closed out 20 years, uh, 20 years ago, literally. <laughs> um, so, and I just wanted to remind everyone again that I will be away from November 1st through November 9th at six working days. And that's about it unless there's more questions. Any more questions for Susan? Um, I'll, I'll just bring up one thing now. I didn't know whether to bring it up under budget priorities or not. But every year when we put in our district needs statement, um, we have to fill in the top three top pressing needs um, for the board. So every year I bring this to the exec and every year the exec have been approving the same 
top three needs, which is affordable housing, seniors, and homelessness. Um, so I would ask if the boards um, uh, would confirm that we have the same three top most pressing needs. Oh, would you like us to vote on that? Or is it that we just need to show our hands? Or what do you want? Um, I th the options. Pardon? I think in the past it's been consensus. Um, it has never been controversial. So, it, you know, it, it, I don't need the vote. But, but you guys should say yes or no. You guys should say yes or no. Okay. I mean, I, I think that's the top priorities across the whole city. I think, yeah, for us. Isn't it part of the budget priorities? I mean, are we jumping the gun? No, it's okay. actually part of the, dis oh. I, I said I was going to bring it up there, but I didn't. It's actually part, when you input the district needs, you know, city oh. planning changed, created the software. When you input the district needs statement, they require you to input those three things. And we're not voting on district needs tonight. Right, we're doing budget priorities. Um, I, I also I am uh, also have to apologize to everyone. I'm going to announce this also at full board next week. But uh, we have been invited to have a table for the district attorney. They have. Excuse me. Could I get an answer first? Oh, I'm sorry. I I thought it was a consensus. Yes. Okay. Uh, can, should we just do a show of hands? Everyone, just show your hands. Did you agree? It's fine. That's fine. With me, everyone, uh, show of hands. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. Virtual hand, if you'd like to show your virtual hand, please raise your hand. Oh, I'm just raised. Oh, I don't what? remember how to raise. Oh, there it goes. Okay, we're good. Okay, Susan, we have a- Okay, thank you. Okay, thank what you. What were those top three again? Um, affordable, house, affordable, affordable housing, housing, seniors, and homelessness. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I do have to backtrack a, a minute. I left this out of my report. Um, we were invited to have a table at the Art of Healing event that the district attorney um, is sponsoring on October 30th from 12 to 4 p.m. It's on Hester and Ludlow, Hester Street between Ludlow and Essex. Um, I'm sorry, hands are still up. Is there something that you need to say? Okay. Um, so if anyone is available to on that day, the 30th, that's on a Saturday between 12 and 4 p.m. on Hester Street between Ludlow and Essex Street, um, they're asking us to do a table um, that would we would supply the flyers of, you know, information about the community board and maybe some pens and I'll get some like candy or something like that to put on the table. I personally cannot be there. I won't be able to attend, but I need to know if there are any of you that will be able to commit to attending that event on our behalf, and I'll make sure you get all of the materials in advance. Uh, Linda, is that a yes? Yeah, I live in the neighborhood, so it would be easy for me to do it, but I would love to have a partner and not be there all by myself. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I wouldn't expect you to stay there all those hours alone by yourself. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so Paul, you're raising what, your what, No, I just want to know what day it is again. It's a Saturday, October 30th. And the time again? It's from 12 to 4 p.m. And the event is called The Art of Healing. On the day before Halloween? Yes, the day before <laughs> Halloween, yes. From 12 to 4, so it won't be dark and you won't be scary. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want to be scared. That's my thing, you know? It's going to be scary out there. Uh, <laughs> I'll see. I don't know what my schedule is yet. Okay. 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 Yeah, I, I may be able to. I, I have another um, outreach event from ten to one in Chinatown, but after that, I could go oh, for like the great. latter half. I may that'd be able to do this one. Okay. So, and I'll also, you know, um, I'm sharing with you, but maybe there'll be one or two other people that may be interested in attending with you as well. Okay. The more the merrier. You know, people need to see the community board present. Visibility, you know, is very important. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, now we're going to move on to our budget priorities. Excuse me, could I? Yes. Just deal with. So I just got an email from um, from David saying the bylaws posted on the website don't contain all the votes that we took. Um, 
so the one that we were sent is the one that was posted. Um, I know it wasn't correct because when I went to copy the job descriptions for Jamie, there was no treasure because everything had been taken out. Um, so um, we need so to I re that. So I, re so I reconstituted the treasure. Yes. Um, if there's another document, so David's saying it's still wrong. Um, if there's another document that should be sent to us, send to us. We post what, I, you know, what we're sent. I did send it the night of the meeting. I replied on the email thread with the document in it. Um, um, did you send it to Ed? Not Ed, no. I sent it oh. to Isha, to you, and to the secretary, to Michelle. Okay, so Ed posted what he got. Um, okay. Can you resend it to him? Ed, okay, I'll do that. Thank um, you. So let me just point out that the, the main mistake is that the bylaws, uh, we, we voted down the, the three month removal process for someone who disappears. Mm -hmm. So when we're covering attendance, don't think we can do that. That's all. That's okay. the big. Okay. So now we will officially move into our budget priorities. Okay, let me. Uh... Okay, so Linda, Linda's going to share the screen. Can we yes. start with capital, Linda, because I think it'll be easier. Yes. Um, so I'm going to tell you how I collated this list. Um, first of all, capital is, is mostly parks, so that makes it a little bit easier. Um, what I did, what I do every year, is I look and say, like, the first 10 priorities last year were parks. So I took the parks first 10 priorities for this year. It's not even looking at the content, it's looking at the committee and how they ranked them. So what you're seeing is, um, is based on that. Okay, can everybody see it? Yeah. Okay. So you want to, I probably want to scroll there. There are the first part, you know, I think they're first bunch of the same parks ones from last year. And everybody Susan, should, everybody should have this list also. Right. And Susan, just to remind everyone that these things don't go into effect until 2022. Well, they were voting on them now for the budget that starts next July. So Susan, the question is whether we agree with these priorities, right? Yes, this is about ranking. And um, they go on the, and on. So, um, you know, we generally keep the committee rankings. We, if they make something four, we don't change it to five. It's a question of how we mesh them together. We probably want to keep moving up. These are, yeah. You know, these are just the, this is the parks rankings. They're not gonna change within parks if you wanna keep going. Um, so when we get to- 13. When we get to 13. Parks, parks, we'll get a school. Yeah. Yes. And then we got a park. And then we have some school stuff meshed in. All the SCA stuff is schools. Um, school stuff that has been asked for last year and was not funded. So we put them back this year. I'm going to keep going. And then um, you'll see after 22, um, everything below that um, was, was not ranked last year. So I just stuck them at the end. Um, there's one library. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, the two parks things. I'm sorry. It's just the ones at the, at the, oh, the library stuff was ranked. I'm sorry, that's my mistake. It's the elevator. The ones, the four at the bottom are all NYCHA. They say land use, but they all came from NYCHA mm -hmm. uh, subcommittee. So you'll see after each one, I have initials for the committee and the, and the committee ranking, just so if things move around, it won't get lost. Right. So the four at the bottom have to be interspersed with the others, and they're all regarding capital uh, improvements for NYCHA developments. And they're all NYCHA developments um, that are either all senior or very high um, 
percentage of seniors. Yeah, it shouldn't even have to be a budget priority. They should just do it. Right. Well, I'm going to be honest. I don't think we have much weight with the NYCHA. Um, th these came from their list. They are going to do them. It's a timeline. They're on their list to do. Um, okay. But and they're going to be done regardless. But I don't think we would want to have a priority list and not have NYCHA developments on it because it would say something about our priorities. Oh, no, I think we should by all means. Yeah. So, so um, what what do you suggest in terms of scattering these around? I would suggest putting NYCHA more up on this yeah. list. Oh, yeah, higher. But I do understand what um, Susan is saying. Many of these projects are already going to go through. Um, I know last year priorities had the, the top 10 list on it. Um, now I think this priority list should have some new ones up further up on the ranking. Yeah. Yeah, and I would yeah I would suggest one near the top, one a few down, one a few more down. You know, just this is that's what we did with the schools. We just kind of scattered them in. Also, the schools too, because well, I they've already been scattered in. This oh no, I'm sorry, they haven't. No, they um, haven't. Yeah, I mean, you know, I it, it it's so when we're looking at they all need elevators, and elevators is such an intricate um, piece of equipment. They're, you know, they're going to get they're going to get the elevators. They're on NYCHA's list to do. Yeah, because it's our priority. Right. Well, they're going to do it even if it's not our priority. Is what I'm trying to say is that we still want to show show that we care. And also, it's, Susan, I don't think um, they told us on the NYCHA list. They they didn't tell us that when they are going to do it. Right. They did they not give they, us a timetable. Right. So they said they would do this. This is on their list, but there's no timeline. We don't know if it's going to be next year or the year after or or a few years later. So I think um, it would be nice we put them on our list, on our priority list, and also in the higher um, position. Yeah. Um, just because they don't have a timeline for that. Yeah, no, I think we all agree on that. I think everybody agrees. So, so you guys should decide where you want to move around. All right. So, Linda, yep. can you can you scroll up a little bit? All right. Let's let's look at some stuff here. And Susan, all the things on this list are currently unfunded, correct? That's correct. So that's the work that we do is to make sure um, that everything on the list is not funded. Um, some of the things like the PS63 things we requested last year because CEC asked us to. And when you look at the register, we get a budget register with answers from the city, which is on our website. And for these PS63 things, they said, you know, no, we're not doing this. Yeah, 63 really does need the gym to have some air conditioning. Okay. I mean, to you me, know, it's not even... all things that are needed. We yeah, are. I mean... So where do you want them? Just... Okay, everyone, uh, how do you want to do this? Should we do by uh, everyone take a... Or do we do a vote to move it up? And how... Well, we're, we're, we're talking about the capital or the expense? Yes, the, the capital. capital. Well, this we're, should at, be we're, we're at capital right now, May. Yeah, I know I see that, but um, just uh, for the no, I, so we're still talking about capital, okay? Yeah, yeah, just just so it's a matter of moving up. We want to move up some of those NYCHA um, elevators. So it like I do agree with Susan. We can like stick them in uh, in between some of the parks. So like you know like every fourth park or every third park, put a NYCHA in between. I don't know I, I, if someone has a better idea on how to do it. Please share. So we stick nature right at the top. That's mine. Yeah. I also agree with Eric because um, I look at the list. I understand the past issue are important, but the nature items you are talking about people's life. And the, right. I mean, the, the past you are talking about improvement, but nature right. is about senior people's right. life. And I also feel like four nature items to stick together instead of scatter them. Um, between um, items. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. So yeah. I'm going to make a suggestion that you keep the first two parks items as one and two. And the reason I'm saying that 
is because in parks, where we place them makes a lot more, much more of a difference than the NYCHA. And these are things that Pier 42 for years, we've been saying this is the board's number one priority because it won't get done. I mean, unlike NYCHA, it's not gonna get done. So, so for the, just for the first two, I would so say. Can we, can we link the four NYCHA right after the funding to construct the remaining seven mm -hmm. malls at Allen Pike? Oh, I say no. I say we put NYCHA right in the top. I, I hear Susan's suggestion, but I respectfully disagree. And I would put NYCHA ahead. Um, the Pier 42 has been on the list, I think a few years now. And um, I even, yeah, I know the whole East Coast Resiliency Project, but. Okay, so that's let's my, take a I'm gonna have to comment on that. I'm gonna have yeah, to comment. Let's, go ahead. Yeah, because there is some procedure in history and those two have been on the list for as long as I've been on the board. And these are unfunded projects. Uh, and I understand what Susan's saying. There's some nuance in the fact that these are unfunded. And there is some symbolism in putting those NYCHAs at the top of our list. Um, but these are unfunded projects. Um, there's no money. Uh, Parks has not said they're going to do it. Whereas the NYCHA elevators, uh, NYCHA has indicated that they are going to do it. It's a matter of time. Yeah, um, they're not funded, but they will do them. Right. So they will get done. So why don't we take listing. all four of them and put them after number two, as Alicia suggested? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the issue is that there's weight here. The, with the parks, we have weight. With NYCHA, we don't have weight. Mm -hmm. And we need to be very careful with our weight for parks where we can have impact. Um, and the first two is where we can have some impact because most of these are capital projects for parks. I don't know how much impact other than, yes, it's important to be symbolic that we will have putting parks, uh, uh, I mean, putting the uh, Anaxia developments, which I don't think you can separate because someone's going to say, why is Allen Street more important than this one? But um, I think it's correct what Susan is saying in terms of where we have impact in the position that she indicated. Thank you, Trevor. Uh, anyone else have a comment? I'm okay. I'm sorry. I'll take a cut. I'm sorry. I want to see some hands. I don't see anybody raising hands. So let's see some hands. Okay. I see one, two. Okay. So I'm going to go with uh, Jackie, you spoke. So can I let Paul speak for a minute? And then I'm going to go back to you. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead, Paul. I'll be quick. This question is for Trevor. So Trevor, you want the first two parks to stay at one and two? Yes. And okay, I, okay. I think because we have impact with the, the parties, we can have some impact with parks. Okay, um, then I'm fine with Alicia's suggestion of keeping the first two as they are and then putting the night show spots right after two. I'm good, I'm done, thanks. Thank you, Jackie? Um, I, I, the suggestion was made by Susan. I have just want to clarify that. And also I agree with that too. Um, I think um, uh, I, I understand the difficult situation here, but um, we do have a more leverage on on um, uh, past than NYCHA in terms of fundings and um, um, putting them to all together um, under the first two items. I think to me, I think it is acceptable um, arrangement. Um, I just want to say that we want we may need to add some explanation why we um, choose this for. Um, Niger items because I look at the, 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 the there's no explanation like the past um, items. Would you like to give us uh, send one in for me? Yeah, I'll send okay. um, those info to you maybe after the meeting because you just need that, that one sentence great. or two sentences. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah, and the, I think I think at the subcommittee we did discuss a little more in detail. So yes, Jackie, I do agree with you on that one. Um, All yeah. right, shall I move them? Yes. Thank you. If I can, let's see. Thank you. Should be able to. Oh, they didn't read number, but that's fine. Yeah, it's pretty pretty it cool. But it actually number. works. <laughs> oh, All right. oh, good, great, awesome. Love it. Let's keep going. 
do we want to change anything else? Yeah, so we've been waiting a long time for this new school at Essex Crossing. May, what's your intake on this? What's your um your input? I'm sorry. What's you know, where are we with that? Um wait, 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 wait. Am I on mute? No, I'm not. Here, here it is. Uh well, we um probably aren't gonna get it this year. However, um, so our strategy has been to, because there's this land, is to you know, get a whole, you know, make sure the land doesn't disappear on us. Yeah. So that's you know, what we're working on. But so I guess if um, you, I, I think the order should be preserved of the three um, school things. You know, the, it, you know, the order should be preserved because the committee voted on it and there's a rationale for that order. Uh, but if you want to move some other things up, and sure. all those things drop down. I mean, you know. It's... So with your permission, because I do have PS63 near and dear to me, and I do understand the substandard conditions there as far as air conditioning and the children. No, no, I'm, yeah, I'm saying, but the order, our order should not. I mean, yeah. you can insert other items from other committees and then, then it drops down. But the order that we voted on should not be changed. Yeah, okay. All right, gotcha. Understood. The, uh, all right, so, so our order is uh, Essex Crossing first, and then the PS63. We stick um, PS63 right after Essex Crossing? Yeah, so yeah, uh, Essex okay. Crossing is first, and PS63 exactly in that order. Uh, so that number 19, number 19 would be next, and, and then, then 22, 20, and then 23. 23. Right. I mean, you can, I mean, if other committee members want to like, stick something in between that's fine but it's just that that order has to be preserved okay. just like it's being done right, for the other right here before kim lab square yes well, well sorry. so this is for the children trevor this is for the kids these are the conditions that the children are dealing with at the school the mm -hmm. wine in the gym when they play it gets really really hot and some children have been no. having nose bleeds I and things no, I understand that. that. That wasn't the issue. But what May Lee was trying to explain was it, that she wait, wanted to preserve. screwed up the numbering. Yeah, I wanted to. What, yeah. She was trying to explain that she wanted to preserve the order of the schools. It doesn't okay. necessarily mean that she wanted to have them sequential. Yeah, they don't to have to be sequential, but you should stick, right. you should not change the order that In other words, she on. didn't want you to move the one item of schools in front of uh, Essex Crossing, just preserve the order as opposed yeah. to just moving them all. So, so is the place where I put them acceptable to you, Trevor? Yeah, um, is David trying to speak or? I think he's talking to someone. Okay. He has his hand up, but he's muted. You're muted, David, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. <laughs> okay, uh, that, hear you. Never mind. Never he's mind. not muted, but we can't hear him anyway. So Alicia, I wasn't talking about the the, the 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 essence of each item. I was just talking about what May was trying to explain. If yeah, no, I, I, I totally got what she was saying, but I think right. she also asked uh, what I heard. Maybe she didn't ask it, but maybe someone else did. I heard someone say, should we put all of the school items, uh, PS63 items underneath the new school at Essex Crossing in front of Kim Lau Square? That was the question. Uh, well, I don't think they have to be. Can you hear me now? So yes, yeah. but can I point out you the the order is screwed up. You Thank have you. you have three, four, two. So twenty one has to become nineteen. Correct. Oh, okay. That's why I put that information there because I knew that would happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. That's it. Now you're muted, David. Yep, that's it. You got it, Linda. Sort of. All right. Yep. Better. Okay. Now, how does that look to everybody? Should we spin down and look again? Okay, keep going. Might as well yeah, please. Down. Yeah. That's it. Um, all the way. Susan, uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to ask Trevor this question. Trevor, for mm -hmm. SDR Park, um, 
I know we already it, discussed that in parks. It's, the yeah. not going to change on that. Okay. All right. That's all I wanted to know. That's it. Okay. So, Trevor, um, I'm concerned about um, the request with no response um, to add something to this. Do you want to deal with that now? Yeah. I mean, if there's a request, but we don't have a response, and typically we need to do research on it before we add it. And I, I, I assume you're talking about the, the college tenants request? Um, about the firehouse. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Um, and, but on top of that, we've never, I mean, the request hasn't come from the person who's supposed to be requesting it. Right. And, so, and Eric. So, so maybe you should explain to the committee what's going on. Um, we got a request yesterday, or was it today? Today, today, uh, today. today. Uh, last, asking, late last night. Late last night, uh, someone asking to add funding for the Firebolt House to the uh, uh, this particular list without any background on it, um, which is unusual um, to do it. I'm sorry, uh, Trevor. Hold on one second. Is is Eric back in? Did you see what Eric asked for? Yeah, I'm Eric is, is in the attendees. I'll get him back right now. Yeah, he's taking the minutes. I need him. <laughs> he said he had to he had to re-log in because um, yeah, he has uh, connectivity problems. problems. Right. OK. OK, got thank it. you. I'm sorry, Trevor, to cut you off. Go ahead. Sure. We got a request from a board member, uh, not from someone who was actually requesting the funding. Uh, stating that they wanted to add uh, an item to this list and that they were going to write a resolution or something about it. Uh, obviously, this has not happened. It's usually discussed in committee, and the, the, the community board needs time to research it to find out whether it's actually been funded. So we asked various agencies and asked uh, uh, Christine herself if she could tell us whether it's been funded or if partially funded or exactly what she was asking for. Uh, as of 719, we haven't heard any information about it from the person who was requesting it or from Christine uh, to see whether or what exactly she was talking about. Um, I, I, there might be an issue at full board, but it's just an unusual request because number one, we do this every year, um, but that's just some background. And Susan, you can fill in any gaps. Yeah, um, so... I spent, again, I'm going to say it takes a lot of work to research this stuff. So I actually spend a lot of time researching this. And what I found out is that there is a letter of commitment with the city that went along with the ULERP uh, for the East, East River uh, Park. And it's in the letter of commitment. Um, there's a number of things that's fixing the pinch point and about three other things and this. So that will happen, but we don't know exactly what it is, what work is wanted. I mean, just firehouses and tell us what work. So we don't know if it's the same work that's in the letter of commitment. And the email we got said it was gonna be brought up Tuesday. We kept emailing today to get information because you can't work with something when you get it two minutes before you vote. And um, I don't know how to deal with it. Um, you know, I just kind of don't know what to do. And Trevor and I, besides trying to research this and trying to get information, have been kind of stymied because we keep saying at every meeting, you can't add stuff at the last minute because we don't have time to research it. Correct. Well, and the procedure is to raise it at committee, not at full board. But it's going. We're afraid it's going to become an issue, and so it's better to know how to deal with it. You know, I'm still trying to get information, um, but I do know. I mean, I have found out that work on the firehouse is absolutely included in a letter of commitment from DDC. They're trying to get the letter for me. I do not know if I'll have it by Tuesday or not. So, what is it that we're? What is what is the work that we're supposed to be? supporting. And why aren't we hearing from the person that wants the money? I mean, I think it's what you always say, and, I, and it's something that I had said a few meetings ago, it's like the work is done at the committee. 
say it all the time, right? Work with there. If you're not at the committee, don't try to shove it in at full board. Simple as that. So, um, yeah. Thank you, Trevor, for the explanation. Uh, we're going to move on. Okay, would you, the um, expense, which will be a little harder. Okay, ready? Well, yeah. we finished capital. That's not bad. Well, no, that one we knew would be easy. So on the expense, I would like, if you will go to the bottom of the expense, I would like to take care of one thing first. Um, Trevor, this is yours. Accidentally, these um, one, two, oh. these four expense <laughs> items for parks, which this year are more important than ever, uh, were accidentally not voted on. So I carry them over in the order in which they were from last year so that the exec could vote to include them um, on this list. Correct. And, and this seems like asked, it should be number one. Right. There's so many problems. Let me, let me just explain oh, one no, thing. No. OK. Let number 27 should be first. <laughs> um, the reason why, well, there were a lot of reasons why we missed this particular vote. Uh, park meeting was about four and a half hours long uh, and we just forgot about it and i take responsibility for that because i should have known but luckily from a park's perspective the order typically doesn't change um we might move one thing or add a couple of words here but it generally doesn't change um i don't know where these were last year susan um i could look but I will, I will say that number 27 is more important this year than it ever has been before. And I think it will continue to be important, especially considering that people are using parks more than ever and parks have become, let's say, interesting yeah. places. They're in the news every day at this point. Um, I get complaints constantly about the condition of our parks. Well, you know, you might have people that may debate you on the parks enforcement police thing because of what's been going on over at Tompkins and recently SDR. Yeah. None of those are PEP. There's no issues with PEP in those parks. Those are NYPD. Uh, um, Paul, I see your hand. And Linda, your hand. So recreation is 14. Parks maintenance is 13 tree pruning is 16 and PEP is 17. Okay. To make it easy, if it's possible, can we just relocate these items in that position they were last year? Uh, let's see what those positions are. Linda, go up, please. That's why I've lowered my hand. Susan has said that PEP is not the ones that are going to prevent people from getting murdered in our parks. Right. Pardon? But somebody That's... ought to pay attention to that. Right. In, the <laughs> NYPD. But those aren't PEP. Yeah. <coughs> what's, what's going on with our CBOs? <coughs> what's happening? Okay, so with what do you want to do with these? To, to, for ease, we can start off by putting them in the position they were <coughs> last year since they're just put at the bottom of the list. So okay. parks maintenance is 13. All right, hold on now. Did not screw this up. Uh-huh. Is that where you put this? So we're going to put that in front of the rat mitigations collection? I was going to ask Susan about that. I do think part of it is- Because we have an increase of rats. Yeah, do we? Is that still going on, Susan? Yes. Okay. It had been unpaused. It's unpaused. Okay, and the next one you want to move is- this Actually, one? it says, it should say, again, if, if you move up, it'll say two parks items. I would put, yeah, put the two parks items together. This one up there after the other one. Yeah. And uh, then okay. a couple of... Right here. Yes. And then if okay. you move, if you go down slowly, you'll see I put in two parks items. Um, someplace. I don't see it. I saw the one, but. Right. Okay. Wait, wait, no. uh, So you put them in the wrong place. Um, so parks, maintenance, and programs should go up under 11. Okay. And then the other two should go there. Uh, 
at um, after rat mitigation? Yeah. So just to let everyone know, there's about four or four teams at the most of pet police in lower Manhattan. They, you, they don't act as regular police. Um, um, it, it's a very different kind of position. They're more like peace officers, but they don't, you know, they're, they aren't the ones that are out there for public safety. The police have to be out there for public safety. Well, <laughs> I guess we'll well, I don't know what's going on because SDR Park, we've had an increase of crime and it's just like getting out of control. It's all, it's all over the city, actually. It, it is in the parks, but it is. A, so everybody's working on, you know, no one's, I'm going to say, it, we're doing a lot about it. Um, and, you know, people are paying attention. Um, I'm sorry, Paul, you had your hand up for a reason. What was that? Disregard. Oh, disregard. It's fine. Uh, disregard. Double check that I got this all right now. So, parks maintenance, recreation, tree pruning, and pep. Yeah, recreation is mostly seasonal. What's the top list again? You want to go to the top? Yes, please. Yeah. So I did the same thing as this one last year. I took, you know, like human services were the first 10, I think. And so I made the first 10 human services or five, whatever it was. And definitely number two, oh boy, needs to be emphasized. Oh, and there's um, one more issue. May I meant to talk to you about this? Um, if you go to the after school of uh, the school based mental health programs. Wait a minute. Is that this one? Number two. Yeah, so number two and three uh, seems like they're going to have to come off because we have since been researching. We um, had been told that they were funded by DOH and DOE. And it turns out that that's not true. They're funded by the state on insurance. So those two really should come out. Mm. Okay, so they're totally funded by yeah, uh, right. the New York State yeah. Department of Health? And, and third party insurance. Oh, third party insurance. Oh, okay. Yeah. So OMH, that is the case OMH then. OMH and third party insurance. Oh, would you okay. like me to delete them? Yeah. Mm. All right, so I will. Um, because we can only have 25, so some are going to fall off. We have more than 25 here, so some are going to fall off. So we know this for a fact. Okay. Okay, so I will um, also note that to the committee um, so that yeah. when, sure. you know, before full board. Okay, May. I also. Um, Real quick, it's because now it's not city funded. That's why it's getting off the list. Did I get that right? Right, right yes. Got it. Okay. So I don't know. Um, so David Garza told me this issue came up at the borough presidents, those meetings she have every other Thursday. Um, I don't go to the meeting, so I wasn't aware. So I did, Shula is a person um, who's, I guess, leading that. And I did email her to ask if they were investigating it, you know, whether they were going anywhere with, with these issues of the uh, school-based and she and I are supposed to talk tomorrow morning. Okay. Uh, whether the issues were school-based? Well, yeah. Um, okay. You know. All right, I'll talk to you about it later. I, I think yeah, I saw the email. You, I, I actually, you're on all the emails, May, yeah, from I, I, with her. Yeah, I remember that, okay. If I have any questions, I'll ask you offline. Okay. So you know, look and see how many you have now because you're going to lose some, at least some. Okay, can you go all the way down, Linda, so we can see how many we have? All the way to the end? Yeah. Okay, so right now you're gonna lose the last two. 
You can only have 25. Mm -hmm. So you might want to. We need to bring 27 somewhere. Well, that's probably one of the least important because it's not a real program yet. I mean, I would like to, you know, it'd be nice to keep it on, but it's probably the least important. Oh, okay. The increased funding for the Cornerstone, is the Cornerstone not the same as the uh, DYCD programming? I thought all the Cornerstones were under DYCD. It says DYCD. Yes. It says it right there. No, but you have some other DYCD stuff further up. Well, there's a bunch of DYCD okay. stuff. Yeah, they're okay. not corners. The others are not cornerstone. Okay. There are, other, there are other programs. They're all separate budget lines. Okay. Well, anything that promotes child activities, I think, is important. Bridge training. Hmm. That's so people who yep, are, are not even, they're, they're un unemployed people who aren't at a stage yet to um, for workforce development is to get them up to speed in order to be able to have workforce. Yeah, development. it's like Access New York. Yeah, I know. Um, Paul. Um, if you're looking to take something down, um, I think the last thing we had on transportation was that inspectors neighborhood interventions. Mm -hmm. um, if that needs to drop off, I'm okay with that. Uh, I know I'm speaking for the committee at this point, but I'm okay with that dropping down because that was the last thing we had under our um, capital priorities. So it's, well, it's, number 20, 24. it's number 24 to bring that to the bottom. Yeah, you could, uh, yeah, you could put that all the way to the last if that's the case. That was the last thing we had on our list, so. Thank you, Paul. Yep. Susan, can you explain expand B? program once again and the why herd program should, why yeah. you should why you think it should come off well i don't think it should come off i was the one that suggested putting it on i'm just saying as far as having weight for it um the others are actual programs um that are probably more influenceable this is a pilot program and i've been told from agency people that work with the pilot program that they think it's very successful. It's something we probably think should be all over New York City. It was, it's, it was simply a question of going back to how much we influence things. And so you feel we don't have great influence with this particular item? As much because it's still a pilot program. Yeah, it's a pilot um, in like three neighborhoods. Can we go up a little bit? Did it freeze again? Oh no. Hi, can we can we look at the others that are earlier ranked? Maybe sure. from 20. We'll back to the beginning here. And okay. then we'll spin down. I probably the things on the first page aren't gonna move. Tell me when you want me to scroll down. I would want this transportation rat mitigation. I would want it to go up after number nine. This one? Yeah, right before the parks maintenance staff. The rat issue is just continually growing. It's ranked at number 13 before it's mentioned on our expense priority list. And if Paul is gonna remove the rat uh, one from his committee completely off the list, we should put rat mitigation more closer to top 10. Is rats not a top 10 issue across anybody's mind? It, it, isn't, it isn't a question of whether it's a top 10 issue, it's going to get more money. It's going to get more money. The kids are going to get less money and the rats are going to get more money. They're um, one of the city's programs that they care about. They do care about it. Pardon? Yeah. So they do uh, care about it. The, the city doesn't care about the kids as much as they care about the rats, and that's the truth. 
Yeah, people are actually having more dogs than they are children. So you're saying the rat the the, pro, the rat mitigation program um, is uh, not as at risk of exactly it, that's of, perfect uh, losing fun. Okay. It's not yeah. as at risk, but it's you know because it's received a lot of attention. That's a perfect way to put it. Yeah, thank you, May. Okay, let's, more on a page. let's give this a look over. Look, 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 look. Go down a little bit more. Let's see. Linda, scroll up to the top a little bit. Okay. Okay. And, and Susan, we're looking to pull one off or two off because. Excuse me. I don't, what? Think we're gonna, we're, I don't think we're going to pull something off from the top page. We're looking to pull how many? I don't know how yeah, many left on the, the bottom. Down. We can have twenty-five, right? Yeah, we, how many right we now have? we have twenty-seven. Yeah. So the two bottom are whatever those two bottom are, are going to fall off. And we're willing to let this one fall off, but I don't. Well, think yeah, we're yeah, yeah. This one. There's nothing that's not important. No. But it'll I think what, what you're trying to say is that those would have less impact um, if they're pulled off than others. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Something has to go. So yeah. So it's a question of impact. So I, I guess I'm asking if, if we're the top 25 are the ones that stay in the in there. Do we just drop the last two because they're the bottom of the list? Right. So whatever whatever two you have at the bottom, they're going to be gone. I'm okay with dropping 27 altogether. So you could drop it down. Now you're down to 26. It's fine. I'm exactly. okay with that. Um, I I didn't I don't necessarily need it to be at 27 or be considered. You just chop we it all together. Hear about something else that can drop down. Well, I believe what we're saying is that no matter what, the last two get dropped off. So yes. um, you're yes. so it's, so you're off. the thing that you're talking about, Paul, is already at the bottom. Right. The bot is one of the bottom two, so it will be dropped off unless we, something else moves in there. And be heard is the last of is the bottom human services one. So if any human service one comes off, it's that one because that's the bottom. Okay. So should we just go ahead and, and vote to remove those two items right now? David, go ahead. David has his hand. David, I can't hear you. Can't hear you, David. <laughs> Still can't hear you. David, we can't hear you. You're having some kind of difficulty with your audio. David. Can you hear me now? Can you, <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Don't delete them here. Send them to the full board because okay. the full board okay. may want to reorder things. Okay. But understand that they're probably going to be dropped off. Okay. okay, so we'll leave them until we get to full board on Tuesday. Thank you, David. Cool. Is your hand up still for that? Okay, lower your hand. Thank you. Okay. How 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 is it looking now, everybody? I think this is pretty good. Mm -hmm. So you want to vote on those two? Yeah, I think we should just go ahead and vote on this. So, just by a show of hands. No, well, you need to have a motion. A oh, motion. Okay, I'm sorry. You Can someone please make a motion? Motion for approval of the budget priorities. I mean, capital priorities, sorry. Capital and expense. Capital and expense, sorry. I, I second. I second. Thank you. All in favor? Hands? Hands? Let me see some hands. Get your hands up. Okay, good, good job, everybody. Thank you. Okay. So Linda, would you send those two lists to me um, now actually, because we'll be sending them out to the board tomorrow. Okay, I'll email them immediately. Let me save them. Thank you. Oh, there's a serious lag. Motion. I second the motion. Marissa, <laughs> we, we've already voted, honey. Thank you. It's a lag. <laughs> what motion? I'm lost. 
lost in the moment. Sorry, guys, I had to work late, so I didn't realize how loud New York City got after COVID. It's really bad. I'm walking home trying to participate in the meeting. Okay. Three, three people have their hands up. Yes. Uh, to the hands David. up. Now two. Your hand is up, David. Okay, Linda. Sorry, I, I was doing something for Susan here and I lost track. What am I voting on? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Your hand is still up, Linda. Oh, I don't even I didn't even mean to put it up. This is so crazy, huh? All righty. Your hand. There it is. Bye. Excellent day. Okay, so that was that was not bad, Susan. Yeah. Pretty good. Very proud of everybody. Okay, let's go on. Agenda. It's just the attendance. Yes. Eric, here we go. Moment of truth. How many people are getting letters? Okay. Would it be helpful uh, for a screen share or just for me to just kind of rattle it off? Uh, no, I think you should screen share this one. Okay, so. This is a pretty important one. Yep, yep. Let's pull it up here. Right. While he's doing that, Alicia, is it okay? And I heard in the beginning, but I wasn't sure to tell us again who has resigned. Is that what we're okay? I'm just from, from the executive officers, uh, our Thomas Rosa and Shirley, our secretaries, both of our secretaries oh. have resigned. Yeah. Um, and and Thomas has not resigned from the board, he just stepped down at from his secretarial position. And I do believe that the same with Shirley. She hasn't resigned from the board, just from her secretarial responsibilities. Okay. And they have just start. waited for the new people to be voted in. I mean, this is, <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of crazy. Listen, I can't make this stuff up, okay? I just can't. It's just it's what is how life just comes at us, man. I just, I, I, honestly, COVID. Okay. <laughs> I'm, That's going to go in the dictionary one day. It's, it's just the definition of all crazy crap is COVID. Mm. I have a, uh, I'm a little disabled right now from screen sharing. Not from I'm going to else. enable you momentarily. There Connecting. Go. Thank you, Linda. Okay. Now try. Okay. So here it is. This one, I think it's this one. What do you guys see? Oh, you see that one. Oh, sorry. Here. Trying to show my screen here. One second, sorry. It's the other one. Allergy. COVID. Well, now we see your allergy. Oh. Now we <laughs> see your shopping list, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. All right, you guys see this? No? What do you guys see? Yes. We see that blank screen. Yellow. It's hey, we see it, but you may want to increase the size so people can see the whole thing. Yes. What you guys? Damn it. Yeah, what about this one? What about now? You guys see an Excel spreadsheet right now? Excel. Yes. Uh, oh, I see it. A nice cap. Nice cap. Okay. okay, good. Um, all right, guys. We did a calculations of full board attendance against all committees for each respective member on the far left here. What it comes out to. Huh? We're, we seeing, see yeah, okay. we're, we're seeing your desktop. <laughs> Well, you're seeing we're, not, we're not seeing the document anymore. <laughs> yeah. What about that? Oh, there it is. Is that better? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry right about that, guys. All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Again, one more time. Full board meeting. We counted all full board meeting attendance versus all committees for each respective member on the far left side here. And when it comes out to what's highlighted in yellow are those that just go above the 33% um, uh, threshold. I think, you know, and we can kind of take a look at it, but what it amounts to those that have kind of the, the higher percentile of it or, or over 50%, you have Jonathan Chu, who's at 75%. Um, you have Shirley Fennessy at 50%. Um, you have here at 67% Ellen Liu, 81%. You have Alexandra Militano, who's the highest 
uh, rape of the group. And then 58% is Troy Velez. So those are already about four or five members that are over the 50%. And we know that we're required to do no more than 33%. Um, and so you have little, you get little pow pows for the little, you know, for like Trevor Holland, who's 35. Yeah, can you, can you go back to my, my attendance, <laughs> please? And, and, and I'm, at, I'm really at 35%, really? It, it, it tends to happen where it's- Where have you been, so Trevor? Bad. No, he's good. <laughs> I think, I, think don't it's lie. Worth, I think it's worth checking because I looked, I was also, so shocked. I looked at Trevor's and mm -hmm. I, I didn't see all those absences. Trevor's mm -hmm. been dipping out of town. <laughs> I've got 35% too. I doubt and that. And Linda time. Jones also is it. But, yeah. you know, look, when are you guys me. absent? Hey, I got to go, all y'all. So <laughs> I'll put my SLA report in the chat if someone will read it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, David. So, but again, I mean, the, these, they're not substantive because, you know, look, we know the activity of both these members, you know, it's just they have such a high volume of, you know, you know 17 committee meetings, 23. It's incredible. So, you know, I'm it, on it, one it, committee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. It, it, it's, let's see here. We clicked into you. You're at hey, yeah, I don't want to. It's not an issue here. I, I need to look at that because I, I didn't think I missed that. You can, but, you can you can throw me out. I'll go. No. <laughs> well, we can look at all of that. Again, taking the report that was given to me by the by. Um, I'm happy to I'm happy to send the attendance to anyone that requests it, and yeah, you guys can check it. Okay, so now I'd like to uh, request it. I'm sorry, I'd like to request it because I see some discrepancies on there that I'm like. I know Wendy's always on my committee. She's my secretary for transportation. She got 47%. What's she been missing? Like, that, 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 that just seemed, I don't know if she's on any other committee, but like that's 47%. It's like half the time. But, okay, you know, here's the thing. We have to always remind people when attendance is taken at the very beginning of the meeting, and then it's also called at the end of the meeting. So Wendy's like, the secretary. She's taking the attendance. <laughs> so she maybe she forgot to put herself in. <laughs> um, please, I'm not going to remember who wants it. If you will send me an email, sure. oh, I will sure. reply Sorry. with the with the attendance tomorrow. Okay. So based upon this, we do need to send some letters out. And Eric, this needs to happen like morbid speed. We have to what's the it. what's the threshold for letters again? Sorry. Thirty three percent. Yeah, about 33. You can't make more than a third absence. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 letters that need to go out. Can, actually can I? Is there more up there? Oh, okay. Can I make one comment? Alicia? Go ahead. Susan, go ahead. Um, so there was a lot of talk during the bylaws about giving the exec um permission to take extenuating circumstances in and um so we have one member um who has been very ill she's been in touch right so she's Alicia and me and yeah. i want to say she doesn't belong someone on. who's been in her position it, it, to get a letter or to get anything harassing when you're trying to deal with a life-threatening illness, Susan, it's just not a good thing. Susan, I, I would not have sent her a letter anyway because she already gave us a medical reason. She's I mean, not on leave. She's not on she, leave. She's, so she's not on leave, but she did give us a medical reason. Yes. And I can honor her medical reason. That I supersede all of that. So, okay. uh, And I've been in her position as well. So I do understand. Um, yeah, I agree with that. So, um, so, so someone should just remember that and don't send the letter to her. Yeah, we're not going to send her a letter. Uh, so, Eric, that that's one person that we don't need to send a letter to, is uh, Deborah Jeffries Glass. Um, no, that's fine. I mean, uh, as far as sending out letters. Let Thank me know you. the process on that because um, I'm uh, not. So we have a template. We have a we have a template of a letter 
that we use is a, a letter giving the percentage. So you have to include the percentage in the letter of how many absences that they've, you know, uh, the percent, the amount of absences and the the meetings, how many meetings they missed because they have the opportunity to dispute it if they would like to challenge it or whatever. And then you could, you know, just show them which meetings, what month in the meeting that they were missed or whatever. So you'll have this chart available to, you know, if they want to identify it and they want, they're going to call you and ask you anyway for those that challenge. But then the ones that know that they've not been in attendance, like you have someone that just know, like Alex Melitano knows she has not been here, right? So for process, if you'll just send an email, like like Alicia says, there's a template. If you send an email to Deidre tomorrow and ask her to send you one letter from the last batch of attendance letters, and then if you will write a letter for each of them and then send them to Deidre, she will send them out for you. So I will contact Deidre about a letter to, that I ask her. Use. Yeah, for a copy of one of the last attendance letters, and then you can use that as a template, and then send all the letters to her. She will send them out for you and copy you and Alicia. I'll do that, and and, and just take a real time example. Like I know Paul, you wanted to ask about Wendy, and just to see some background. This is taking into account March through September got two dates that she was absent. That's fine. That happens. But when you, and if we go to transportation, which she participates in that you said she's there every time, you're absolutely right. She's been present, present, present only one time. Her total number is 6.5 out of seven. Her attendance rate is, is, is amazing in transportation. What happens is she's also registered in the arts committee. So oh. her attendance is what is what's killing her here. That's what brings it up. She's 90% yeah. absent there. That That's what makes it all, you know, come down for her. Yeah. As a, as and an, so she should totally like either decide whether she's yeah. going to stay on that subcommittee or not. And yeah. that's, and that's yeah. another thing. Thank you, Eric, so much for that clarification. Appreciate it. I, I think that yeah. this is something that members that join more than one committee or they join a subcommittee, they don't realize that when you don't attend your subcommittee meeting, yeah. it counts in your attendance because yeah. you made a commitment. And right. what do I always say about commitments? Don't sign up for stuff you don't want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Eric, can, you bring, up, huh? can you bring up parks for me? Okay, Lynn, you trust? Um, no problem. David Except, Crane needs to be promoted again. Oh, I'll get him. Trevor yeah. Holland has been 100%, no absences on parks. Now let's dive into what could be the issue here. It has you listed. In land use as well, Trevor. Oh, I forgot about that committee. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to land use. What even then, even then, you have a good, you have a good rate there. So uh, that doesn't seem to be a problem. Uh, 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 what seems to be, and then you got exec and Chinatown, so that shouldn't be a problem. But let's see, executive and. Uh, Chinatown, Chinatown doesn't exist. Chinatown has yep. not. That doesn't exist, so we don't yeah. even look at that. Yeah. So we're on exec with Trevor. Your attendance is good, Trevor. What's going on here? Yep, you're right. It's got to be a miscalculation because you have you have great attendance on all of that. So, all right, so I don't want to dive into it right now, but if I so can. you had no. What happened was at full board. Uh -huh. It's full. It's full board. You were absent. In May, you were absent in July, you were absent in September, and that's where you got the attendance issue. It's your that's 50%, it's your full, though. Your full your full board membership. Yeah, that's Paul Eric, what's the full board membership percentage? 50%? I'm sorry, I'm just still trying to figure out one thing. See, it's the same as any committee. Let's see. In fact, we, we often tell we often tell members that your full board attendance is looked at by the borough president mm -hmm. but I'm, my I, it, what is showing is that i'm 50 percent at full board but my total percentage is 35. how is that possible right. that's my point yep I think it's wrong. this is what yeah see what happens is the formula had you actually taking a different cell which actually was the place of a 
Thomas Rosa for uh, which one was it? Eric, we're, we're hearing you mumbled a little. Sorry, I was just saying, I just corrected the formula. The calculations was calculating Thomas Rosa where you should have been for exec. So for the exec attendance, it was miscalculating. It miscalculated. It was taken in this one where you can see an issue there. I just updated the formula so that it reflects this, which is T16 and U16. And when I do that, Trevor, you're off the, the naughty list. Because you, okay. you, yeah, so. I, I, knew, I, I knew there's no way I missed all those meetings. But. Linda, I think that there may be panelists on that aren't panel, shouldn't be panelists. Really? Might that? be the same for Linda. Let me check. Okay, Linda. panelists are good. Yeah, I don't think they're all exec members. Oh, wait, who? Who is not? Who is not an executive member, Susan? Jay Wong. Who is that? That's Jackie. That's Jackie. That's Jackie. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. That was Jackie. <laughs> hey, Linda, you're also going to be. Uh, David you know. Crane has his hand up. David, go ahead. I don't know if my sound is fixed. Is it? Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, how many other, I don't, I don't know how many, um, should we be suspicious about other formulas? It it just seems you know. The common thread here seems to be the exec committee members. So I'm going to review all the exec committee. Those were the only ones that seemed to be an issue because I guess, I, I don't know why, I can only surmise, but see, yeah. That's better. So, yeah, that's. I'll buy 17%. Yep. Eric, just a suggestion, just follow <laughs> up on what David just said. Just for consistency's sake, just maybe look over everybody's again that have that high number, whether it's true or not, just do that like a double check before those letters go out. And that, that's it. That's just my su suggestion. Yeah, they. I know, the, I, know, I know the common threads of the exec committee, but just in case there's other little hiccups with other people. Yeah, we're not gonna send anything out until we, you know, 100% got this down. Um, but definitely get the template from Deja tomorrow. <clears throat> you have to, cause we have to do this within a certain time frame of it, according to our bylaws, that the letters have to be sent out a certain amount of time before the next meeting. And they have to be invited to the ones that have the higher, they have to be invited to come to exec to explain. So who's gonna do that? Well, who's I, guess gonna... I, I guess I have to invite them. Okay, so you'll be inviting them and which ones are being invited? All the of ones them? above, I'd say anybody above 50 should be invited. David, right? Uh, David, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. So what do you guys think? Anyone above 50 I should invite to the table? After the, the numbers. Yeah, are after, after Eric does the recalculations, I'm just saying in general, anyone above 50% should be invited, right? Elisa, I'm just asking, is that... Is that in the bylaws or are we just using that as a number? Well, I think it's over uh, the 33 to 3%. So, I mean, the one third percent. I, I, let, me, let me just double check the bylaws, okay? Hold that. Hold in on. other words, is, is, are you? Well, I'm going to check the bylaws, okay? Sure. Jackie fixed his name. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having some technical problem on my end. I'm trying to fix them. I thought you're an intruder. I was out. I, I, I'm using my um, second computer to log in. Jackie, do you have a new name? <laughs> mm. Long so story, if... I'll tell you later. <laughs> Okay. Alicia, if you look for initiating the removal process, that's where we're at in the process. So you're basically doing it correctly. The executive committee shall discuss the issue as soon as possible um, at, a, at a meeting, which may be an executive session. 
committee may by majority vote initiate action to remove or reprimand. Okay, so we would make a decision like you proposed. Should we do it above 50% or whatever? That would be that decision. The next thing is if the executive committee decides to initiate such action, the board chairperson shall place the proposed removal of the board member on the agenda of the executive committee or other appropriate committee or task force. We could, we could propose a hearing committee, not next month's exec, but another committee if we chose. That's where we are. Also, um, because I presented this with those discrepancies, I know there might be some question about my review of it. My review of it is, is showing that this is pretty much the accurate now, but I would encourage maybe another pair of eyes just to verify my statement. So it's not just my word. I know it's tedious, but give yourself an hour, hour and a half. You can click through <laughs> each. It's probably the, time, it's the amount of time it takes actually, but it's if you want to go down the line. I spent a little close to two hours to review all this. I do catch that the exec committee seemed to be the issue. And one of the reasons being there's these I sometimes hide lists that if you unhide it, when you do a formula calculation, it's calculating the wrong thing. So that I just see that here. So that's why Trevor's was being calculated over here for some strange reason and also Linda's. But I just looked over the main ones that are over 50 and they all check out. And if you just wanted to look over these ones, you can, you can catch that. It won't take you an hour to do that. And, and basically because they're in maybe one or two committees, like in the case of Ricky Wong, you can just check the health and arts committee. You can see that it's verifiable. Troy Velez. Troy Velez has been very dutiful in the full boards, but he's only attended one, practically only one meeting in his other committees. That's why it's this high. So yeah, if someone else wants to look at it, but this is pretty, pretty, uh, it's pretty much it. Um, Trevor, can you help Eric in being his second set of eyes? I wish I could, but I missed this class um, completely. Uh, <laughs> if it was in a word, maybe. What but he's talking about hidden formulas. It's not a hidden formula. Look, I missed no. this class. I'm just going to be honest. Okay, so look, no Eric, way I could do that. So Eric, do you need help? Like, Eric, sorry, this is May. Do, do you need yeah. help checking the formulas, or is it the input of the data? I don't think it's the input of the data. It's more of the formulas that have been on some of these for the exec. Like, perfect example, I just changed something in exec and whose uh, formula got messed up? It was David Crane, because he's also on exec. So now I'm going to have to manually okay. put in. All right, if it's just the formulas, it's just the spreadsheet, I could take a second look if you pass it to me. I mean, if you email it to me or whatever it is. Awesome. We'll okay. do that. I will do that. Okay, so first of all, I wanna say thank you so much, Eric, because I do know that this is tedious. I myself had the, <laughs> the daunting task of doing this at one point. And then uh, this was Lisa's uh, creation to recreate the way the formula is calculated. So, um, and, and it actually made it a lot easier from the way I had to do the formula. So, hoo hoo. Um, and thank you, May, for helping uh, Eric with this as well. <clears throat> right now. So we, I did pull up the bylaws, and I do, uh, you know, I know that David Crane, you did say something um, to express that the removal of of board members for a cause, right? So um, this is for any reason. They all go through the same process now. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, uh, definitely if it's a sub substantial lack of attendance at board meeting, a subcommittee or task force meeting as defined in section H and section H says all board members are automatically excused from up to one third of their obligated meetings to cover short term illness, work and other everyday issues that come up. So they still have to explain themselves. Now I know one person who has addressed 
a personal issue with us and that person, we don't need to name names, but okay. So we know about one person. I don't know about all the rest of them that may have attendance issues, especially the one that has more than 80% absence. And that person was approached by the borough president. So we think, I don't know. And I still haven't gotten a response from the borough president or that individual. And this is before the attendance was calculated. So, um, yeah. Lisa, what, I, what I was asking you and, and David, and you have explained it, is the 50% uh, uh, sort of level you were using. And David has basically said that you can decide 50% for sending out a letter, but that's what I was wanting clarification on. So I, if that's the case, I'm okay with that 50% number. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, I, 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 would, I don't think that it constitutes 11 people having letters. I think it constitutes just the few people that have above 50% and, um, and we need to do it sooner than later so that that gives them an opportunity to you know, don't they, don't they um, all need to get letters? Well, they all going to get a letter saying that their yeah. attendance has been, you yeah. know, whatever, but except for the one person. Um, but I will send everyone else. I would say yes, send them all out a letter. But the ones that have higher than 50 percent, we will invite them to come in. And, you know, uh, well, David, you suggested that we have a separate committee for that. But I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Uh, it was a suggestion. I, I heard you say it's a possibility. I was reading the bylaws. Right, the it bylaws is allow us. Okay, it does allow us to. But right now we're at crunch time. We're in the middle of nominations, elections, and all of that. I had a hard enough time finding people that wanted to sit on the nominating committee. So imagine me trying to get people that want to sit on a, another committee for something else. I mean, I don't. I don't want to put all our business out on the internet. <laughs> no, of course not. I mean, but we have a committee called the Personnel and Member of Matters, which is the logical one, if it's not okay. exec. But if you want an exec, exec is also fine. Okay. Exec should probably be where it happens. I'm just- That's where that's it the happens in the past, but okay. We decide whether we want to invite them back and send a letter inviting them and what committee we do them to. That's what we decide tonight, those two things. Okay. so. So we decided that we would take the, everyone will get a letter that has above the fifth, uh, above the one third threshold of 33%, yes. Except for one person, I'm gonna uh, omit that person. Um, and then everyone else will get the letter. And then what we'll do is invite them to, uh, anyone above 50% will come to, uh, get an invitation to come to the executive committee. Um, if it is deemed that at executive committee that the person merits to have a separate um, process, another process, then it will go be referred to the personnel committee. How about that? How does that sound? Paul, I saw your hand. Uh, you kind of just answered it in your response. Uh, I was just gonna say, I think you should just go straight to personnel. But um, that's just me uh, to try to use that. That it seems like there's going to be a decent amount of people with that 50% number for it to come in front of exec. Um, and if it could happen in front of a separate committee first, and if there's any decisions that need to come out of that, then it could come up to exec. But you know, that's oh just my that's a, my opinion. And I let you need to schedule it today. Hey, yeah. hey, I went. Listen, I was totally wrong. I no. jumped right into the removal process. This is not removal. This does come to the exec. Yeah. You were absolutely correct. I'm it so has sorry. In the past. <laughs> okay. My bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's okay. I understand. You, you're, you're young. <laughs> okay. So, how are we doing? Let's get back to that screen sharing, Linda. Let's move on. Eric, you're gonna share the information with May. May and you are going to, May is gonna be your second set of eyes. And we're gonna get back to uh, Deidre in the morning. Hopefully you can knock this out tonight. It's 8-12 um, and let's go on to our committee reports. 
Um, so Linda, you're gonna give the report for the nominating committee is what I was told. Yeah, I can do that. Um, the nominating committee has got at least one nominee for every office. Um, we intend to have a brief meeting tomorrow, a Zoom meeting tomorrow and take responsibility for contacting those that haven't yet been contacted to make sure they're willing to run. And then we'll have a slate. Okay. Thank you, Linda. Do we need to put any meetings on the calendar for October? Do you know yet? No. Do I need to add anything? Okay. All right. Um, thank you, Linda. You're and welcome. thank you, your committee. Um, David's got his hand up. David. Yes, David. Well, I meant to take it down, but I also will say that the bylaws do not require us to hear any of this at exec this time around. It would, you know, we, we could just send a letter. Calling them in is not required by the bylaws. Thank you. I think we already knew that. Anyway, my hand was up accidentally. <laughs> Thank you, David. Okay, David, now you can speak for the SLA. Oh, excellent. Um, I'm going to read it from the chat because, oh, it's gone. Where is it? We had nine different, I'm sorry, she sent me a, send it to me so I could read it. And here we go. I, I David, just read and tell us if there's anything. But I don't know where it is. Okay, David, I can read it, it for you. I don't think there's anything. To. Thank you. If uh, there's, yeah, go uh, ahead. I'll do it for you. The SLA committee heard nine applications this month and approved stipulations for them all. We expect two of the applicants not to sign their stipulations, and we will argue our case for those stipulations to the SLA. Thank Does that you. sound right, David? Exactly. Since I dropped in and out of the meeting, it was no longer in my chat. Okay, so I wanted to remind everyone, we normally, with the committee reports, you know, at exec, it's normally just supporting one another. If there's any item that you need support with, it doesn't have to be long-winded, long-drawn or whatever. It's just anything that you feel as though the exec could possibly need, you know, be heads up or need some, you might need some support with at full board. So, um, so thank you. Uh, Trevor? Parks, Waterfront, Resiliency? Yes, um, very long meeting. So. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> well, first up, uh, we had the ESDR team come in to talk about the construction phasing for uh, the East River. They will be coming next month to give a long presentation and we hope to get most of the questions before the meeting because that could go very long. Um, Based on what you just said in terms of where we need support, um, there was also a very long meeting on the opening hours and procedures for the Kinley Park. Uh, they had been closing the park or there was some issue as to who's supposed to close, who has the keys, that took some time. Most of the uh, execs from parks were there. We think we are able to, we're able to memorialize the opening and closing and who has the keys for that particular park. Uh, but that did raise, it did, we did spend some time on that. I think those are the only issues, um, you know, other than little flower playgrounds, you know, another new playground, which would be very nice, but uh, I don't think there was anything else. Okay, Trevor, thank you. Uh, transportation, public safety, Paul. Oh uh, yeah, we just, we approved three resolutions and did our budget priorities. There was nothing huge that came out of it. Um, we had one organization come back for their loading zone and it was handled and it was, uh, it was pretty quick, <laughs> but nothing to report outside of that. So Paul, I asked Linda and, and also uh, Trevor, I asked Linda today at Borough Board to ask if the other, um, because I do know all over the city, they've been having incidences with uh, bikers, um, the ones that transport food and other items. Um, they've been having issues with robbery and assault and um, some loss of life. So I asked for Linda to ask that borough board if any other committee chair, uh, community board chairs would like to uh, engage in a possible resolution. 
Well, what would be the resolution be centered around? Is my question. Uh, like, what what are you looking for? Like, yeah. I understand there's a lot of issues going on that are not just to this district or this board. It's all out throughout the city. It's you know the delivery people were getting attacked. Yes, we we saw what happened last week. We saw that kid who got shot on Delancey Street as well. We we see stuff that goes on Avenue D all the time. Um, Susan and I spoke about this this week, and I know we've sent some emails out already to start the process. Susan, you already have your hand up. Go ahead. Oh, no, finish. You finish first. Oh, um, yeah, no, we, we've started the process of trying to get a bigger meeting out of this. I don't know if this is something that could be solely taken care of at the public safety level. It might be something much bigger than what we can uh, handle. Um, this is something definitely bigger. These, the, the rate of crime that's gone up. Um, the levels of where people are feeling unsafe. I get it. I understand that, but it's not exclusive to our district. So it's definitely something that's gone up all over the place. Um, go ahead, Susan, I'm done there. Yeah, so I did, you know, Paul and I spoke and I um, did go through an elected official office to see if maybe they wanted, it's not a precinct issue, um, to have one police plaza deal with it. Part of the reason was, you know, also to prevent, you know, sometimes people like to engage and take these situations and engage in fear mongering. But anyway, I, I have not gotten a response. So I will follow up, but I have not gotten a response. But first of all, for the situation in our board, I think there is more involved than, than people are aware. Um, the commanding officers called me immediately as a matter of fact, they called me Saturday morning for the first death, and then they called me Saturday afternoon for the second death. Um, I don't see, what are we gonna say in a resolution that people shouldn't be killed? Um, you know, there's this terrible conflict going on where when we go to meetings, and Paul and I hear this all the time, people want more police response. They want more pres police presence. They want more police response. And then when we, try to get the elected officials to support that, they won't send out any letters asking for police because the police should be defunded. And you know that's the big issue that we're dealing with. What do people want? You know, you, you, you can't give both messages. So um, I don't know what kind of resolution we would do. I mean, you know, clearly everyone you know is concerned about more crime. Um, you know, they should be dealing with this mental illness and drugs, and that would probably impact a lot of it. I think I saw Linda and Trevor have their hands up as well. I put my hand down. Okay. Trevor? No, I'll just be quick. A lot of, obviously, this, these issues are occurring in parks, so hence the priorities for parks. And I don't know if there's a solution, unfortunately, for a lot of these problems. I, I, and some of the reason why our meetings go so long, uh, talking about needle boxes and safety in parks, um, there's a, a sort of different attitude towards the use of drugs. And I, and I understand moving or, or having uh, uh, intervention uh, to prevent a lot of this, or at least to, to, to separate from the crime issue. but. I think we really, and I don't know what the solution is. I mean, I've talked to some of the folks at parks too about what can be done. They've mentioned it's not just our park, it's happening up at other parks and other areas uh, where um, it, it's a problem and it's gonna get perhaps even, I, I don't know if it's gonna be solved in any time. Yeah, I, I think there's, um, I, I hear you Trevor, I know a lot of stuff is going on in parks and a lot of stuff going on in subways as well. The crime rate's gone up there, uh, there's this, um, it's the ebb and flow of a way of, of crime and with more people coming out, more people taking their masks off and stuff like that. And people have been cooped up for a year and a half, uh, that people are <laughs> frustrated. There's things going on. We out in West side, you see a security guard get stabbed up, uh, at the Apple store, just because a guy didn't want to wear a mask or a person didn't want to want to wear a mask going into the store. So we're getting the, the smallest things are turning into the biggest issues. So I, I, know everything that happened down there over the weekend. It's uh, everyone um, called Susan really quick. She called me. I already knew what was going on because it was, it was all over the news. Um, 
and we like I said we spoke and we, I was like this is this is something much deeper and higher than what um, a committee meeting will do you know and a, a potential resolution it's not like it, it, there needs something higher and yeah it goes back to when we want our elected officials to write a letter saying we need more police resources and then all of a sudden there's the defund the police argument and we, we don't know if we can sign on to a letter so there, it's a double-edged sword that's been being swung right now for lack of a better phrase Susan, you still have your hand up. I don't know if you yeah. want to. Yeah, I was going to say, um, just little things we're trying to do. Um, Trevor and I have had some meetings. Um, Bowery Mission approached us, and they're going to be once a week doing food provision, but with other providers and, you know, hopefully harm reduction. Um, that's going to be in SDR Park. Um, we do have harm reduction going out. I mean, these are just little things, but they're things we can do. We are paying attention. So we have harm reduction in, um, in uh, Tompkins Square Park. And Trevor, I didn't update you today. We're getting three needle uh, sharps containers in SDR Park, um, so, which took only about three years. Um, but, but, you know, we're trying to get more you know, more outreach to the people. It's it's not much and it doesn't replace police, but it needs to be done and we're trying to do that. Okay, thank you all for your input uh, on the- Can I just add one more thing, Alicia, if you don't mind, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Um, and now with this new vaccine mandate out for the city workers, expect less police out there. <laughs> so it's gonna be pretty rough. So they, they already have, not them their resources are kind of low as it is it's about to get lower because a lot of their cops won't get vaccinated they won't do that and now they have to so um this is going to be one of those things where people just have, have to really be vigilant about on their surroundings and know what's going on around them you know you can't just pop some headphones in and pretend nothing's going on around you so be ultra hyper vigilant about what's going on you see people are out there be you know Make the appropriate calls, reach out, reach out to homeless outreach, reach out to 911 if you have to. Um, but just be, be mindful that now with the city mandate, this is going to be a little bit rougher um, in terms of the police presence, if that's what people want. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, thank you, Susan, and everyone that gave input around this topic. Um, Anisha, economic development. Um, we had uh, one resolution this month that was a joint item with transportation. Um, it was, a, uh, the resolution is about supporting um, the Lower East Side Partnership expansion of their services um, to include more robust sanitation measures um, in the area, uh, in like the concentrated area, uh, you know, Delancey to Houston, uh, Orchard to Essex, maybe. Um, there's a map in the uh, vote sheet um, that has the exact boundaries that they're looking at. Um, and yeah, just the, they, they are looking for support in starting the process to put together that new expanded program. Thank you, Anisha. Thank you. Um, Health and Human Services, mainly. Uh, hi, so um, I, don't, I, I just wanted to uh, give a little report on uh, a presentation we received um, uh, last, at our last meeting. So it was from the New York City Racial Justice Commission. Um, it's a new commission. Um, it's a two-year commission um, and it is mandated uh, to um, look at the city. It's like a city charter revision commission and it's mandated to come up with some ballot proposals um, that would be put on the ballot in November 22 um, that would be related to um, revising the charter. But as its name is, you know, the focus of these revisions is on um, like uh, promoting or increasing, uh, uh, you know, equity and justice. So, um, so they've had these, public engagement sessions, and then there are these meetings. But um, the question was asked, well, 
you know, they're going to have a list of like ballot proposals. And usually there are like these hearings about the proposal and pe like, people can go and comment on them. So they're not going to have that process. They're just going to do a little bit of education about their proposal. Then at the end of this year, submit it. And then it gets into, you know, the ballot um, in the 22 elections. So this is, um, you know, so for us, you know, the charter, um, New York City Charter governs, I mean, it governs many parts of people's lives, but also it governs how community boards operate. So it is of special interest to the community board, but, you know, the, the way they're doing it, we won't really have a chance, nor will members of the public really have a chance to have further comment once they have these, um, you know, proposals. So I don't even, we didn't even know what they're going to be related. Is it related to community board or other things? But, you know, um, they didn't really say, oh, well, they said they gave one example, but I'm not sure that was the best example. And, uh, you know, we know that, you know, community boards, um, you know, there's a lot of, you know, I mean, across the board, you know, in all 59 boards, you know, there's like, you know, there's better ways we can operate that um, it helps increase justice and equity. But, um, and, you know, some of it can be baked into the charter, you know, I don't know, but we're not really getting a chance to, you know, have more input in this. Mm. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> that, that, that was what, you know, so it was interesting. And if anyone has any more insight into it. Um, yeah, I mean, they're on this process, they're on this timeline, and it's not, it seems like there's not much more we can do, except, you know, uh, you know, try to you know, you know, keep in touch about what, what the proposals will be. Okay, thank you, May. Uh, Nisha, your hand is up. Um, I can give a little bit more context to the process. There will be an opportunity to comment on um, the ballot proposals. I, I didn't listen to the presentation, so maybe that um, wasn't clear. Um, basically, uh, this commission is different from any other charter commission that has existed in New York City history or in the history of this country, actually, um, to actually look at the charter um, and identify ways to dismantle structural racism. Um, so the way that this has been set up is different from typical uh, charter commissions where there may be discrete proposals that um, are already sort of identified. This because um, uh, there is no precedent for how to dismantle structural racism through a charter. Uh, there's a big there was a big research and comment period from um, you know over 70 experts. They did you know nine public hearings to gather content and ideas. Um, and what was presented was uh, the end of uh, that research period, really. So what they heard was you know, close to 2000 hours of public testimony from uh, people all in all five boroughs, uh, expert interviews, um, interviews with uh, community-based leaders to come up with focus areas. Um, and then policy experts are coming up with what ballot measures would be uh, appropriate to address structural racism, right? So um, that's why those haven't been released yet, because there's a lot of like research and thinking about what goes into it. Um, by mid-November, those uh, a, a list of potential ballot measures will be released um, for uh, public review and comment. Um, it won't be a very long window um, because it is supposed to, you know, finalize a set by the end of the year, but that opportunity will come. Oh, okay. You mean by mid-November, you mean by next, next month, mid-November, right? Yes. Yeah, so I guess, uh, you know, so maybe there'll be, you know, I think on the website, I saw like one or two meetings, you know, scheduled for that time. But I guess for a community board, you know, um, it won't, we won't have, we will not be able to, given our process. No, but there will be, again, a series of public hearings, like that anybody in the public can come to, um, and then uh, a way to provide additional feedback um, through a variety of different digital tools. Yeah, they didn't communicate that. It may, it may sound like there'll be a little bit of education, you know, yeah. um, that, that's, that's really what he said, you know, yeah. and because yeah. we, you know, so. It, he very specifically, because I asked, and he very specifically said, there will not be an opportunity to comment. So I think when they're out engaging the community, they better, as May said, be a little bit better educated. Yeah, I um, mean, th that one was like one of the first uh, sessions 
um, that he's done at a community, like that, that the RJC staff has been doing. Um, but I think like there will be an opportunity. It's just probably not gonna align with coming to the community board again. What's the name of the group again? Uh, the New York City Racial Justice Commission. Okay, thank you, May. Thank you, Anisha, Susan, thank you. Um, we're gonna go on to land use, Jackie. Let me unmute myself. Okay. So, um, land use did not pass any resolution other than the budget priorities. Um, but I have two things to report. Um, the first thing is the two bridges rezoning. So, DCP accepted our um, worst case scenarios, which is a major step of the application. And the next step is to um, prepare a um, environmental assessment study. And the co applicants has some funding to do that and is looking for a vendor um, that, and separately, um, there are some parkland outside of the two bridges area. And previously, the borough presidents had convened a meeting with um, several agencies to protect the land from um, development. I was at that meeting as well. So we need to find out if the borough presidents has taken any actions or um, anything uh, can be done, which we will report back to the community, uh, to the committee um, at the November a meeting and what else and also the second thing to report is actually from the nature subcommittee um jim shelton now works for um nature and he came to present nature's patch conversion plan at campus plaza number two um which will bring the building to become a project based session eight um campus plaza number one was already converted um under a similar program a few years ago um, so this proposal would allow the two buildings to join together and also allow nature to have um, new capital funding from federal to complete their um, repair projects. And under the patch conversion, nature would procure a private entity to enter into a ground lease and manage the building. And um, nature has already met with the campus plaza TA to discuss the matter. And Jim also um, disclosed that NYCHA is uh, in a preliminary talk with a, a adjacent developer about transferring their air rights of the building. Um, but this is a very, um, still a very early um, stage of the discussion. And also, um, I want to go back to what Susan brought up at the beginning of this meeting. Um, the committee member did talk about expanding the outreach, and I think it is needed, but I also told the committee that um, it, it should be a group effort and it takes the whole community to work on that. And actually before the pandemic, when we were still having the in-person meetings, um, Nancy would print flyers and distribute them, um, distributing them to the TAs. And besides, yeah. uh, right. And besides the, the committee is in need of a secretary and a Zoom coordinator, I just expect the committee members to step up and feel these two internal responsibility first before we can talk about expanding our reach. That's what yeah, I. I agree. Thank you, Jack. Yeah, yeah, because when we have a new, like I'm just like a temp chair for that subcommittee, and when we have a permanent chair, I hope we already have a secretary and Zoom coordinator for that committee. Yeah. Well, Zoom coordinator until at least January. Right. Right. <laughs> Um, thank you, Jackie. Yes, you're you're right on with that one. Um, Landmark, you did meet. Yes, um, the land. Let me let me let me give my little teeny borough board thing first, okay? Because it'll it's quick. Um, it kind of follows on what we were talking about the city charter. Uh, there's there is an organization called the Franklin H. Williams Commission which is addressing fairness and equity and justice in the court system. And they've been working for several years now and they started out working with judges and the staff in the court system. Um, as you probably can sort of, if you looked at a picture of a bunch of judges, you see a lot of old white guys and this is obvious to everyone. So they're, they're working on bringing about more diversity in the courts, but as they did that, they've kind of worked their way down to the colleges and even to the high schools to try to encourage young people to 
you know, embark on careers that would lead them to be working in the courts. And it struck me as a very uh, pretty well organized kind of a kind of an effort. And the, at, the, at the end of their presentation, they mentioned that they would like very much to address community boards and give the same pitch to them. And uh, I think it would be probably be of interest uh, to our community board, maybe for a full board meeting sometime in the future when we're not so crazed. Mm, thank you, Linda. Um, Landmarks Committee. So Landmarks Committee had uh, two resolutions. We had a presentation from Andrew Berman of Village Preservation discussing the proposed historic district south of Union Square. Uh, Jackie, you may remember this from land use that the city wanted to make a special district and they wanted to have hotel, some fancy right. hotel approval. And there were a lot of things buried in that proposal that were not so beneficial. So uh, Andrew made the presentation. It turns out that this, first of all, South of Union Square takes in both community board two and community board three. So it takes both community boards to support this. Community board two has done so. Um, about uh, roughly a third of the buildings, about 200 buildings total in the in the south of Union Square District. About 66 of them are in are in CD3, which is a surprise to me. I did not realize there were that many. Um, so we passed a resolution in support of the south of Union Square Historic District. Um, the second resolution was a certificate of appropriateness for a building on Second Avenue that wanted they've they've developed a new a new term for a rooftop addition which is a vertical extension mm. so they want a vertical extension of a tenement building on second avenue which is in the lower east side historic district um, it's not a bad proposal we approved it with some conditions relating to moving the moving the thing moving it back a little bit so it's less visible from the street and doing some changes to the colors again to kind of minimize it. Uh, like all architects, they like to maximize what the thing they build. And but this was a very nice guy. He he was he took our suggestions to heart. And at this point, it will be up to the Landmarks Commission how much of it, of it they take to heart. It's not a bad proposal. So we did we did approve him. That was it. Thank you, Linda. Okay, Jackie, you already spoke about the task force, uh, for, I'm, I'm sorry, the NYCHA and Section 8 subcommittee, arts and culture, Anisha, they did not meet this month, but they are still working on their uh, town hall. Town hall, town hall. Um, and then uh, is there any old business currently? Anybody have any just, old business? Just one quick question. When is the election? Full board? The election is this full board? Yeah. yeah. Tuesday. No, it's November. November full board. Okay, November. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, you know, I think the chair of the nominating committee doesn't know that. So we're having a meeting tomorrow. So it's you're in saying, the bylaws. I said in the bylaws is section. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> so let me just make sure I have it straight. So he, we we're going to be presenting the nominees at this meeting, right? And they're going to be give, be able to give their talk their speech. At they normally we normally have them right before we vote. They have their speech. They give okay, like, so that will be in December. November. In November. In November. Okay. Yeah. The the, the new sure officers that he reviews the bylaws. Yeah, the new officers should be in place in December. Yeah, that's much better. We were on this speed up that I didn't get. So. I think it, the slate is presented at this board. Is that correct? The slate should be if if yeah if, this, if all the nom because he closes the nominations. Uh, I think he closed it already. So yeah, it already closed. Yeah, so that's it. So the slate should be announced at this. Uh, Don't we this, close nominations at the full board? At the full board, yeah. Because yeah, right, because someone may be closed. Some, right, because someone can nominate themselves yeah so the nominations are not closed uh, well no I he, think closed, closed. 
Well, he had a how can they able to submit nominations? Right, he had a submission. So whatever he received is closed. Yes, and okay. he, and, but they could still nominate at full board. At the full yes. board on the floor. Yes, at the floor. Yes. Can't they do that right up to the election day? I would check the bylaws. Yeah, to. we have to check the I bylaws. I don't think so. One. Okay, I'm, I'm going to, you'd think after doing this for two times, I would know, but it's gone out of my head. No. You're, you should be the expert. <laughs> it should be, but I'm not. <laughs> but I, I do know how to read the bylaws, so I will do that before we have our meeting tomorrow. Thank you, Linda. Um, any new business? Before you leave, can I just ask people, please read the vote sheet. Um, I used in track changes, I tweaked a few titles, and Paul, I added an address into your loading resolution in the Be It Resolved, so let me know if all this is okay, and please read the draft agendas. Jackie, I think you'll probably want to add two bridges to the agenda. Yeah, if you could do shoot me an email. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so please, please do me a favor and, and uh, check the vote sheets and check the um, the draft agenda. Thank you. Susan, that's the address we were looking for, if I'm correct. Um, I, I took it from, I think, um, I don't know where, I think uh, I, I took it from the resolution. It's just that I okay. put it in the, therefore be it resolved. I just okay. put the location of the loading oh. zone in the okay. therefore be it resolved. That's all. Okay, that's fine. Thanks. Okay. So if there are no uh, any other new business before we take our roll call vote. All right, go ahead, Eric. Alicia Coleman. Yes. Larissa Scheinberg. Yes. Eric Diaz. Yes. David Crane. He left already. Left. All right. Uh, Shirley, nope, sorry. Uh, Alicia Stephen. Yes. May Lee. Yes. Jackie Wong. Yes. Linda Jones. Yes. Trevor Holland. Yes. Paul Rangel. Yes. Done. All right. Can I have a vote to adjourn? Didn't you just do that? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Roll call <laughs> vote to adjourn. <laughs> I'm tired. Thank you. Okay, everyone, Eric, you'll send me the minutes. Right now. Thank yes. you. And I will see everyone on Tuesday night. Thank you so very much, everybody. Have a restful weekend. Bye, guys. Thank you, Linda. Thank you.